that sense of overcoming the dark satanic mills, of lifting women out of work on low wages, work where they were taxed and not recognised as having a say in how the country was run but also the images of fighting the good fight in a sense, the shield, the sword. The suffrage movement is rebuilding justice for the British nation by giving women the vote. Women over 30 finally won the vote in 1918, but Jerusalem's role as a rallying cry for women had only just begun. Now first we have Rita who's in the Jerusalem hut, and this is Kat. Oh. Oh, Here comes yeah. the secretary. Oh. <laughs> the dignified ladies of the Women's Institute may seem far removed from the radical campaigners for women's suffrage, but many of the early leaders, including the first WI chairman, Lady Denman, had been actively involved in the suffrage movement. What Lady Denman really wanted to do was to take the values of the suffrage movement, the sense of women being active citizens, playing a role in politics, having ideas about politics into the rural community. So it was a huge vision of women's empowerment, really. So many pretty floral hats, and they're all lovely. But I think for originality, I've got to pick Rita. It was in 1923 that Vice President and former suffragist Grace Haddo wrote to the WI magazine Home and Country, suggesting Jerusalem should become the Institute anthem. Both words and music are simple and dignified and are easy to learn. Incidentally, the learning would give pleasure to any WI and would afford an excellent opportunity for a short talk, either on Blake's poetry or on poems about England. We have long looked in vain for a National Institute song. Here is one made to our hand and one which some counties have already adopted. At that year's annual general meeting at London's Queen's Hall, over 2,000 delegates of the fledgling WI made Jerusalem their own. That line, England's green and pleasant land, it is about rural England. And the Women's Institute movement is for rural women. Initially, it could only be set up in communities where there were less than 4,000 people. So it's really about giving a voice to people who have been in hidden parts of England, who have not had voices. We grow most of our vegetables, you see. That's one of the things the Institute has encouraged. Institute? What's that? Why, it's, uh, it's a sort of club, really. The rural areas were not pleasant places to live for many people. The cottages had no running water. They were cold, they were damp, there was a lot of illness. They equated those with, with the dark satanic mills and they could see through this new movement that they were going to be able to make a difference, that they were going to be able to improve the housing, uh, get better facilities for themselves and their children. And yeah, they were actually bringing Jerusalem to the green and pleasant land. I think they saw it that way. We helped to get a village hall. We gave the post office people no peace until we got a telephone in the village. We arranged with the county library to open a branch here. And I think they also felt, as you still do today, if you sing it with a very large group of people, a kind of sisterhood. We start, as always, with Jerusalem. So please be upstanding for Jerusalem. When you start a WI meeting, there's several ways you can do it. I mean, there are still some of those stalwart WIs that sort of ring bells and bang gangs, you know, oh, which, yes. which we, we, we don't have that. But it's the welcome ladies, you know, will you all please stand and we'll sing Jerusalem. And that's it. That's the start of the meeting. That's the, that's the, the coming impetus. together. Yeah, that's, the impetus that's sort that of sets you. us going and it says, we are the WI yeah. and this is what we believe. I'm sure he's having a chuckle up there. No, he's not. As a national federation, the WI comes together and you have this huge body of people that stand behind you and say, yeah, we're with you, we're going to do this and we'll see it through. And they damn well will listen to us, you know? And they have to. The government's, you know, I mean, they're, they're scared of us, quite honestly. <laughs> this is truthfully the most terrifying audience I've ever seen in my life. Those who questioned the resolve of the doughty women of the WI 
should remember what happened to Tony Blair at the annual general meeting in the year 2000, when members felt they were being used to score political points. I've spent a long time working on the National Health Service. Slow hand clapping started. Today, it's an internal dispute that's caused uproar in the ranks. New members have suggested the unthinkable. Perhaps the time has come to stop singing Jerusalem. I would be very, very sad if the WI stopped the association between the WI and Jerusalem. I would go one further. I would say that if they ever said it's no longer the WI anthem, I don't think I would want to be associated with the WI. Everybody can take the sword. Everybody can do something. It's just a case of standing up to be counted. Mm. And the trouble is that these days nobody wants to stand up and be counted. Except the WI. Except the WI. Except the WI. <laughs> Except the WI. And, and we, we are will. quite happy to be counted. <laughs> in those feet in ancient time Walk upon England's mountains the image of England as a rural idyll where ordinary men and women can control their own destinies and be free from interference has made Jerusalem a potent force in English party politics. of royalty to, to the country appeal to the Conservative Party. If you look at the end of our conferences, uh, we sing the national anthem and Jerusalem. Uh, and I think it is just we do feel. We feel a very strong bond with the country, a very strong um, a degree of loyalty to the country, an idea of service beyond ourselves. And it is about a building fairness and justice. And that means, never mind the green and pleasant lands which conjures up immediate visions of the English countryside and the rolling lakes. Never mind that. Actually consider the people on very big inner city council estates um, wanting to do nothing more than live an ordinary, modestly successful, unmolested life. I want to build a green and pleasant land for them as well. When the Conservative Party sing it, they're singing about England's green and pleasant land because this is a hymn to England and it can be seen as a patriotic statement. They don't think that Blake actually wasn't into that, that Blake was actually a very alternative guy, alternative in his religious views, alternative in his social views, alternative, dare I say, to the ladies of WI in his sexual opinions. You know, but Blake, whatever you want to make of Blake, you can make of it, because the great thing about the beauty of the language, Blake should have actually written political manifestos, because they mean whatever you want them to mean. Walk upon England's mountains green. Labour sings Jerusalem because it's the dream of a better society. Jerusalem, by definition, is the good society. The society is better than this. And believe me, uh, it is absolutely embedded in Labour's heart. When my father died uh, and saw the clergyman who was going to perform the funeral, I said, we must have Jerusalem. And he said, can't possibly have it because of this complicated introduction. La da 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 dee, da da dee, da 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 dee. Nobody will know when to come in, he said. And I said, everybody will know when to come in. And we had it, and they had the complicated introduction, and the entire congregation, full of city councillors, came in on the right note, because it was there in their hearts. We've all been seeing it all our lives. Let's go forward into this fight in the spirit of William Blake. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall the sword sleep in my hand, till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Even before Parry had composed his music, 
Blake's words had stoked the fires of Christian socialism in the 19th century that laid the foundations of the early labor movement. I mean, Blake was highly critical of what he saw on the streets of London. He was living at a time when, when thousands of people were coming to London from the countryside and a whole new urban underclass was being created in, in huge numbers that hadn't really been seen before. And this deeply troubled him. Um, he, he wrote a lot about, about the things that he saw on the streets. There weren't any organised political parties or radical groups around at the time, and so in the end he articulated it in a much more spiritual way. He's saying, if Christ came to England tomorrow and he saw what we've done in the Industrial Revolution, the, the building of these dark satanic mills, what would he say? Would he, would he say, well done, chaps, this is exactly what I had in mind? Or would he say, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, this is, how can you do this? How can you exploit people? How can you exploit nature? How can you exploit all this and still believe that you can be in some way Christian? The original Christian socialists, let's call them the primitive Christian socialists, actually believed that socialism and the second coming went virtually hand in hand, that there would be the reign of God when man was brother to man, when all the iniquities of society were ended, and therefore the idea of God, part of the idea of the young Christ having been in England as a boy, which is part of this myth, that was very important in terms of rebuilding the society for which they thought he stood. 